Hello everyone and welcome to Sinful Gaming. I hope you're all doing well, I hope you're all staying safe, and most of all, I hope you're all fighting out war against the grey. Today's video, we have a Black Library review for you, and today we're going to be checking out the last Valari by Gary Kloster. Now this is a Soul Black Gravelords focused novel. It's narrated in the audio version by Amy Roxon and Fiona Skinner. As always, I generally like to listen to audio versions while I'm doing some other hobby, working on new models for the channel, working on editing or whatever. Um, both the ladies in this did a fantastic job of bringing the characters on the two halves of this sort of story to life. It really gave a nice dynamic when uh, they sort of give these two female, I guess, lead and main sort of bad guy in the story. These two sort of opposite stories have these, you know, quite different voices. It really did add a lot to the story as a whole, and I really liked it. Um, but this is, I believe, the first time I've read anything by Gary Kloster. Um, I can't remember anything else I've got in my audiobook. Uh, that is a lie. Sorry, just quickly checking while I'm... Reading this, I have listened to one other Gary Kloster story, and that was part of the successes, uh, which was sort of a amalgamation of a bunch of different Space Marine successor chapter stories. So I've listened to one story by Gary Kloster so far, um, but I haven't listened to a full book. So um, yeah, I'm really quite excited to get talking about this. So let's get cracking on. If you're a Soul by Gravelers fan, you'll probably really want to have a listen to this one. And so, uh, we have our story. Nissa Valari is dying, but that is impossible because she is a soul blight vampire, blessed by Nagash with blood-fueled immortality. More than that, Nissa is a fighter. One of the handful of cast life vampires not dissolved into true death when the Crimson Keep of their people abandoned them a century ago. With her blades and her will, she and her family have carved a kingdom out of the broken plains of Akshi, the realm of fire. And so, these things, though, they matter little. For Nissa's blood, though, is apparently cursed. It destroyed the vampire that she would call father, um, and it threatens to do the very same thing to her. Nissa's allies slowly begin abandoning her one by one, but worse still, an army of crazed Sigma zealots led by a brutal priest of Sigma come to destroy the vampire lord and claim dominion of these lands on the broken plains of Akshi for the god king himself. Nissa Valari is dying, but that is impossible because she has spent every moment of her second life refusing to lose. And so, this story's purpose. For me, I think one of the big things in this is this really introduces her to Nissa Valari. Uh, she will play a major part in the entire story. She is the main character. And we'll talk a little bit more about her in a second. Um, but it does feel like this story really is setting up her as a character. Um, but it also introduces us to her cast life family, both close and extended. Um, and we get this really interesting sort of look at the inner workings of a vampiric court. Um, the way they sort of govern their lands, and the way the people within those lands as well view their vampire overlords, um, or indeed, you know, their vampire lords, depending how they sort of feel about them. And I think, you know, is these different feelings of some of oppression, some of servitude, some of gratitude, some of outright hate. It is a really nice and different mix on how people view, you know. When we have these super powerful vampires protecting us, and all we have to do is provide them with a little bit of blood, and they leave us alone um, it's an interesting sort of dynamic on some that go, well, that's maybe worth it. No, that's not worth it. That's inhumane. We seem like livestock to them. It's an interesting sort of look for me. But I think the Castellai are a really interesting one to look at because they are, you know, while they are these blood-sucking uh, monsters, effectively, they are also, you know, honourable and noble knights. They have this sort of um, code of honour and code of conduct that they try to uphold. Not all of them albeit, but many of the truer Castellai and those that sort of are higher ranking within Castellai definitely sort of try to hold this particular sort of level of honour and nobility about themselves, which I think is a really interesting look at vampires that we don't always get to see. And so our main character is Nissa Valari. She is pictured here front and centre of the cover. Now, Nissa Valari is the daughter or rather side vampire of a um, 
more powerful Valari uh, Lord, uh, who was Castlia. She grew up in the Crimson Keep. Um, and effectively, he made her into this powerful weapon. He was sort of like some pet project of uh, her father's, uh, or, you know, her size. She calls him father, so we'll refer to him as the father. Um, but uh, on top of that, like, she, you know, becomes this powerful vampire within it because she's got, you know, some of the truest blood of this particular family, which is really interesting. Um, and about her, you know, she's a powerful swordsman. She's maybe a little bit brash and a little bit impetuous, but she's extremely strong, extremely fast. She knows, and many of the others know it, she's one of the most powerful vampires in the area. She's not that great in necromancy. She does have a lot of power, so maybe control beasts around her. Um, and she control all manner of different beasts, which is pretty cool. Um, but she's a really interesting sort of character. Um, and there's also some little interesting quirks about her. The main one being, she has the voice of her dead mother inside her head. And so, what changes about her over the course of the story? Now, without saying too much, without spoiling too much of the story for you, over the course of the story, this really is about Nyssa becoming the leader. You obviously read at the start, you know, her father is uh, has this cursed blood and he ends up passing away pretty early on within the book. Um, that's not spoiling anything. It's pretty much a major part of it. Um, and her mother's gone, hence the voice inside her head is her dead mother. Uh, her dead vampiric mother, her second mother, I should say. Um, but it's really interesting because this whole thing is about her becoming the leader that her father was. This isn't, you know, some sort of normal nobility where... You inherit the lands that you got because of your birthright, because your side is the right one to become leader. Well, then, and so some of the other vampires challenge her. Some of them just go on off and do their own thing. Um, and it really is about her becoming a replacement for her father, who was this feared but also respected leader of their vampiric court. And she now must learn to take that place. And so, what does this story do well? For me, there is a lot of moving parts within the story. We obviously have the whole cursed blood storyline with Nissa Valari, but as you read, there's also the mother inside her head. There's her court falling apart because of her father's death. There's her trying to rebuild that court. There's also the normal enemies she's fighting on the Broken Plains. And now there's also this Priest of Sigma uh, coming along and causing all manner of awfulness. And all these stories do intertwine really, really well. And I think the author does a great job at making some, you know, follow the path you expect them to follow. And I think this is where the book really does a good job because the ones that follow the path that you expect them to follow, you're quite fine with. But it throws in all these things. First of all, it swings you out some turns um, and shows you some different outcomes than what you expected. But also, at times, you get further and further on the story, and especially on the ones where... You think you're right on what's going to happen. And then all of a sudden it just takes a hard left or right turn somewhere along there as you sort of go, oh, well, maybe these are all going to end like how I thought. It really does swing some big curveballs at you in different parts, which I really enjoy. Um, when a book gets you so settled that you think you know what's happening, you think you're plodding along, you think you've seen the twists and turns that are happening. Um, but then all of a sudden, you know, you get these big turns and you're like, wow, I did not see that coming. It makes for an enjoyable read. As long as those are, you know, well-placed and well-founded and they back it up with the words on the pages or the words that are spoken in this case, because I listened to it on Audible. Um, as long as all of that makes sense, which all of it does, it really gives a really enjoyable read. Who would like this story in the end, though? If you are a Soul Black Gravelers fan, especially if you are into that vampire aspect, you're into the Blood Knights, you're into the Castellia, all that sort of stuff, then this is the story for you. But also, I think Nissa Valari is an interesting enough character. There's definitely some great adversaries within this. I think this is a really good story in general uh, that I think lots of people could get in and enjoy on. In summary, I don't think there's too much more I need to say about this story. It was really fun to listen to. Um, I enjoyed it. The pathways that a lot of the different plots went was really nice. Some of them intertwined really well. Some of them went off and had their own thing. And there's even some great stuff at the end of it that really did, I think, set up potentially for more stories about Nissa Valari in the future, which is awesome. 
Um, I think the character cast of this was really well done. The difference between a bunch of the different vampires of the court of the Valaris was really interesting. A lot of the different human characters in there were also interesting as well and provided some really different outlooks on different things um, and, you know, were very different on depending on what side they were on. So there was a lot to it. I really did enjoy a ton of this. Um, this was a really fun story. I would certainly recommend this to anyone. I thought this is probably one of the best things I've read from Black Library in a little bit. Um, probably only, I think, so far eclipsed Age of Sigma-wise this year by Bad Loon Rising, which still is probably my number one for the year. But this is a really fun story nonetheless. Very great job to Gary Kloster and to Amy Roxon and Fiona Skinner for bringing the characters to life. If you have read The Last Valari, let us know your thoughts about it down in the comments below. And so that is the end of the video. We hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below, letting us know what you enjoyed about the video. Also, if you'd like to come chat more with me and other members of our great little community here at Cineful Gaming, we have a Discord server linked down in the video's description. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so by one of the following ways, either by going to our Patreon or YouTube members, which are linked down in the video's description, grabbing yourself some merch from Teespring or Kofi stores, also linked down in the video's description, or by helping us by purchasing something through one of our channel sponsors with our discount codes, again, linked in the video's description. Now, as a special thank you to all our supporters, we'd like to give a shout out to all our Patreons and YouTube members. So thank you to our Patreons, Christian Weir, Soren, Candy Lyle, Outer and Shot First, Andrew Bowen, Cure Dynamic, JJ Austrian, Average Wargamer, Dovemere, Mark Harvey, James Cater, Benjamin Swallows, Redmine, Iron Grinch, Colorblind Magic, Grimskold, and Andy C. And to our YouTube members, Green Roots Gaming, Ronya, Lock Lorik, The Johnny 84, Broken Chef, Ariana Edwards, Revenar, Pink Nico Fire, Robin Mankiller, Monty's Table Top Terrain, Davis Weird, James Tillman, Gargamel196, Disco, and John Castle. A special thanks as well to Lady Witch Fox Art, who does all the amazing artwork for the channel, and indeed to everyone who helps not only run our Discord, the Facebook groups we run as well, but also comes, joins, and plays in the games on the channel that you see as well. Thank you all once again for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, stay safe, stay well, and most of all, keep fighting that war against the grey. Ciao for now.